Hello, African sports fanatics. Welcome to another episode of the Safari Soccer Show. I'm your host, Yvonne Etta. Now, my guest today is a very good friend of mine. Uh, I owe you a lot in this career of mine, uh, France. Uh, and welcome to my channel today. Thank you for coming through. So please just introduce yourself to the viewers because I think most of them do not know you. Introduce yourself and maybe take us through how, how, why you decided to become a football legend if you have played soccer before and uh, maybe just your life in football as a whole. Okay. Uh, good morning to uh, VS of African uh, Football Show. Yeah. yeah my name is uh, Franz Mbedi. Yeah. I'm a soccer agent based in uh, Pretoria, South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've been in football before. I played football, but not professional, okay. semi-professional. Yeah. That I can say, yes. And then I, I managed a few clubs, mm -hmm. uh, also from the semi-professional uh, league, mm -hmm. not uh, the pro league. Mm -hmm. and then that's when I started to develop an interest into scouting, helping players, managing players, and so forth, yes. Uh, but it has been a long journey, very long journey. Okay. That's, That's all that I can say in terms of where I come from with it. Okay, Franz, I have hosted coaches before, I have also hosted players. But then today is a different one because I am hosting a football agent. You are dealing with players and you are starting players. So I think today is um, one of the shows that I think it's mainly for the players to watch. I think so. So maybe just as we start on my first question, uh, maybe can you share with us your experience, your personal experience in this uh, uh, scouting of the players? Uh, first, uh, you uh, get to know the chairmen of the clubs mm -hmm. and then and see where can we help? Okay. Then you go to the field. You know, most of agents, they just want ready-made players. So me, I go to this amateur football. Yeah. I go around Africa. Mm -hmm. I've got friends around Africa that introduce players to me and say, hey, France, this player, have a look at this player. Okay. And first, uh, I take a look. I don't just say, call a team and say that, but they strike or I defend and so forth. So I have to follow the player. <laughs> look at the uh, the uh, the process of the player the progress of the player mm -hmm. the discipline of the player mm -hmm. then from there then you can just uh, start to say okay give a player a call and say hey look can we work together do you have anyone that you work with uh, uh, i can help you okay. then you hear what the player is saying then from there you can develop a relationship mm -hmm. and then you introduce yourself to the club that uh, the player is playing to so that they know that uh, this player is working with this agent Okay, player working with them. That's how I, I go about in, in terms of scouting and uh, recruiting players. Uh, it's a hard one, as we had told you before. Now, Franz, how, how does one uh, become an agent? Do you go to, uh, do you do a certain course for you to become an agent? Yeah, different. It, it used to be, it, uh, the lesson used to be done by FIFA, but uh, now they've stopped it. They said, no, player, people can uh, use intermediaries. Okay. But some of the football association in different countries, uh, they do have that course that you go through for agents so that you familiarize yourself with uh, the regulation and the rules and then uh, how to handle yourself. So forth, yes, the, you have to go through if there, that uh, football association is providing that if maybe you are from a different country. But in South Africa, yes, we do have uh, that classes provided by, by SAFA. Okay, uh, Franz, but then again, uh, in this football, uh, I think one cannot uh, miss a fraud. So just a question, how does one know if an agent is not quacked? Because most players always get themselves uh, to agent, but then they go for trials. Where either when they fail the trials, the agent leaves them in the in the other country where they went for trials, and, and I think this is affecting most of the players. How how does one need to know if an agent is a a, a quack or a real one? 
Uh, that one is, is, uh, is very difficult because now you might find that there is an agent with the license, with the okay. FIFA license or the license from his country and still does the same. When the player fail from a club, they just dump the player, they leave the player. Yeah. That, has to be, that has to be the relationship between you and the player. You understand? And uh, I, I think players must be very careful into that, to rush into saying there's a club, maybe people saying there's a club in Europe, can you pick your bags and go there? Yeah. First, communicate with your club. Your club will also do the research yeah. if there is an interest from that side. And, uh, you know, players, they tend, to, they tend to leave without communicating with the club that is paying his salary yeah. at present. Just because the agent saying, I've got a job for you, he just pick his bag and leave. Mm -hmm. then when he's tough he has to go back to the same club that he left behind you see mm -hmm. that is a very different uh, difficult situation first uh, in, with me mm -hmm. if the player is contracted to a club first i communicate with the club first mm -hmm. so that the club knows that no there is france that is willing to help the boy here Okay. And then the clubs will give me the information of saying the boys contracted to us. Mm -hmm. This is his this, uh, this is his discipline side, and then um, the parents side. Mm -hmm. I know the, I I get to know the player through the club. Mm -hmm. Then I can even get the, the contact of the of the parents from the club. You know that relationship between agents and club is very yeah. important. Yeah. Because if immediately if you start to block the club mm -hmm. and you run with the player. That's when the problem comes because yeah. if this player tend to you leave him here in South Africa, then the player becomes stranded. Mm -hmm. You see, and it's not good for these boys because yeah. you tend to kill their spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, apart so from I will advise the boys to say if there is an agent, communicate with your your club yeah. and say, look, I, I've met this guy. He's based in the UK or is based in uh, South Africa. His name is France. Yeah, uh, he's willing to help me there, there is a club there, then the club will give me a call or maybe the club will ask the boy to say, let France call us. Okay. Then in that way, both sides is safe. Okay, uh, France, but then again, uh, uh, apart from players, do you also recommend coaches to clubs as well? Okay. Uh, I think I lost you. Let me just try get get you back. Amelie? Okay, okay. I, I think I lost you, but then I asked, I asked if uh, apart from connecting players to clubs, do you also recommend coaches to, to the club? Yes, I do. I have got few coaches on my list that I've worked with, uh, that I'm still working with. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, I recommend to, to clubs and then uh, not only if they've got the job, even after the job, yeah. we still talk a lot in football and so forth and understand the strategy, how I uh, understand. Okay, but I, I think uh, maybe after this interview, maybe I think uh, players can maybe reach up to, out to you or some will want me to connect them to you. So maybe before uh, I just con connect them with you, maybe there's this question, what do you look for a player? What do you look for a player to sign or uh, recommend to a club? Uh, first, I'll start to say me, I check in the discipline side because that is very important. You know, if yeah. you've got a player that uh, is not disciplined, you can't work with that player. No yeah. respect, no nothing. You can't work with that player. Yeah. The talent will come later. First, there's a discipline. Mm -hmm. Then the rest will follow. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, communication. If we were to recommend a player to me, first, I can't say you can't. I can't say I'm looking for a certain type of player. I have to look at that player. I have to see videos of that player. Yeah. Then I know what type of player do I have on my stable. Okay. That uh, if the club is looking for a center back, I know that, okay, fine. This center back mm -hmm. is a left footed or a right footed one. Then I can talk to the club and say, look, I do have this player. Mm -hmm. It's a national team player, or maybe he's been scouted in the national team. Mm -hmm. So for that information. Yeah, but uh, players are open to contact me. Mm -hmm. um, wouldn't to work with any player. I don't discard players. Yeah. I work with any player. And then if I do fail with a player, I become up front as a player. Look, my boy, mm -hmm. here we are striking, but things will come right. I don't promise even earth because uh, this football market is very difficult. Sure. 
But then now you have got the club and also you have the player as well. Now what yes. determines the player's worth? What do you mean, uh, determine the players with? Yeah. Uh, that one, uh, you know, the worth of the player is the age, mm -hmm. injury free, mm -hmm. performance, mm -hmm. the club that is coming from. Yes, yeah. Those are the ones that, because first the club will ask you, uh, is he a national team player? No. Then you know that, no, look, we are trying to give him a platform here. You can't sell a player that is from, is not a national team player, okay. the same field with a national team player. You can't do that. Yeah, you can't. Yes. Yeah, because the player has to be, be valued by his club and by his country. Mm -hmm. Then the rest, even, but they, there are some players that they get a good contract, not from a national team side. It depends the club that you are going to, mm -hmm. you know, how they value you. Because sometimes the value comes from the club and say, look, then we start to discuss and say, no, no, no look, this boy is a future boy. Mm -hmm. The club might benefit after the contract with the club. Going yeah. forward, the club can benefit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I think uh, you, have, you have been in this industry for quite some time now, but then I, again, I know there are challenges that you have faced, but one challenge that maybe I would want to know is have you ever had a dispute with your clients? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you do. You do. Okay. Uh -huh. You just have to handle yourself because sometimes you, yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's tough because you do, you, you know, there's tricks in football. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of tricks. Uh -huh. There's a lot of tricks. Even the clubs do the same. Uh -huh. You understand? They ask you for this player, you brought the player. Overnight, they book you to a different hotel. In the morning, the boys sign with the club. You see, mm -hmm. you were not there. So the club will say, "No, look, uh, why should we pay you? Because uh, we we did the deal with the boy." <laughs> you see. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the good thing is for you to have a good relationship with the player, mm -hmm. because the player can dish you, and then you don't have any say. If the player says, "No, look, I've done the deal," yeah. you understand, and the player. You, you go with the player to Europe, you reach there, the player says, no, this is just my brother, he's not my agent. The club can give me an agent. Then the club provides an agent, the deal is done. Okay. You're out. How do you contest that? You see? So that's what I'm saying, honesty from the player mm -hmm. and from the club. Because the same club, when they need, when they need a player, they will beg you, they will ask you to say, bring the boy, bring the boy. But yeah. when the boy is there, the terms changes. And you know, the boys wants the job. They will forget about you and say, hey, here's a contract in front of me and this agent is here. And the club will say, no, look, I want, we don't want to do the deal with your agent. We want you. Yeah. What are you saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's when you get left behind. <laughs> you see? So it, it, it's kind of gambling. You are not sure if the player yes. is. <laughs> you see? And then me, well, what I like is that uh, I will advise other agents to say, look, I have a mandate with the player. Yeah. I have a document with the player that can protect you and say, no, look, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, this boy is my boy. Here's our mandate. Mm -hmm. Then, then there you are safe. Okay, uh, uh, but then uh, again, I think uh, apart from the challenges that you face, I think you have a, you have very big accomplishments as well. So, what strategies did you use to to sign your most accomplished clients? Uh, you know what I, uh, I mostly tell people, you, you have to get hold of what you know is your diamond, you understand? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So the, for me, there are certain players that they grow within me mm -hmm. from certain stage to certain level. Okay. And then I know how much they worth. So those boys, I've been working with them for years. Mm -hmm. And then we're still in the same page. Those I can say, okay, this boy started from here. Now he's got a family. Now he's a married man. Now he's accomplished this. He's got a house. Working together. Yeah. So that I can say, I look back and say, no, look, this has been a, a very good journey for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, you, you, you know, you, is, you can get an established player from Europe coming to you and say, look, uh, I want to work with you for a certain deal. And then after that deal, that player goes back to Europe. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, okay, Frank. Are you still there? Okay. Let's see. Let me try getting you back one more time. Okay. I think we lost you in the middle of our conversation. Maybe just if you can rewind what what you talked about the last sentence that you said. Hello. Okay, okay. Can you get me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, okay. L let me just ask, uh, uh, because uh, apart from trying getting the players better club and taking them all over the country and also Europe as well, apart from, apart from in Africa, you also take the players in Europe. So apart from that, what, what have you done to advance the careers of your clients off the field? Uh, me, I, I always advise my boys to do short courses while they're still playing. Okay. You know, education with players is very is very good because you know players they tend to forget that uh, football is a short career, mm -hmm. thinking that no after football I can just be a coach or something else, mm -hmm. and then if it becomes difficult for them, they tend to hold grudge against the former clubs and say, okay. no, I'm not being given an opportunity to the club. Mm -hmm. So for me, my advice for them is that, no, look, uh, take something on the side from the education side okay. so that you know that after football, you, you can also do something. And also I've sent them to investment uh, conferences, uh, you know, mm -hmm. for them to know how to save their own money. Mm -hmm. You see. Because you know, in football, these boys they tend to buy these fast cars with money, and then yeah. after football, uh, <laughs> they are still without a house and so forth. So it's very difficult. So I will advise boys to say to players to say, look, do something that you know that uh, nobody can take it away from you after football, mm -hmm. and that is only education. These short courses they help a lot while you are still playing your football. Yeah. They will come in handy after football carry. But then I think, uh, Frank, in my last interview was with a, a club chairman. So I had asked him, why does he, he let these are bigger names in the club, the players who do well in club at that moment, why does he leave them to... He, the, the players go as free agents. Uh, okay, uh, let me just. Okay. Hello. Let me just try getting Frank back to the last time before you end up the interview. Okay, Franz, I, I, I was asking you before we lost you. Yes. That my last interview was with the club chairman, and I think he's your friend as well. Uh, that's Gormahia's club chairman, Ambros Rachel. Then he, he, yeah. was, he was telling me, I asked him, why does he let the bigger players, the to leave the club uh, as a free agent, why doesn't he, he try to renew the contract of the players before their contract runs out? So he told me, okay, there are people who identify the players at the peak of their career, before even their contract starts, and they tell the players, look, we are offering you this amount. So, and how long are you left to be with the club? Do you, uh, and then the players uh, ought not to sign for the, to sign with the club, so the club cannot at least get something from their move. 
How, how does one come to handle this? Hello? Okay, did, did you get my question? No, 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 no. You can, uh, you can repeat the question. Uh, okay, I, I, I get I the question. How, how, how can club uh, officials handle this situation whereby when a player is at the peak of his career, but then his contract is running out? How, 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 how can uh, the club handle this situation, not letting the player leave the club as a free agent? At least the club should benefit from the player. Uh, you know that one. Mm -hmm. I think also uh, the club is the one to blame yeah. because now you know what. The, sometimes mm -hmm. a player comes to a club uh, yeah. as a young player. He yeah. grows with the team. He becomes available to the club. He becomes very important. Mm -hmm. Then the club must show the value to to, to appreciation to say, "Look, uh, we value this boy." And then to do that, give the boy a good contract. Just yeah. call him with his agent and say, "Boy, look." Okay. You've been faithful to us, you've been helping us. Mm -hmm. Here is something on front of you. Mm -hmm. So now the club say to tend to say, look, they 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 they, they play that wait to see game. And then the players that that's when the players leave for free. Yeah. Because now the player knows that okay, fine, now this club has not been valuing me. Mm -hmm. Now they want me to extend with this certain money okay. of which. Okay. Yeah, that one, and then in front of the fans, the fans they tend to say the player is not loyal. Yeah, the player no. doesn't respect the club. The yeah. club has been looking at the player, mm -hmm. not knowing the whole story. It should be two parties. Yeah. Yes, the club has to come in and say, "Boy, look, we know you're on the final stage. Where we want to reward you with a good contract." Mm -hmm. You see. Then the player will be. I don't think the player will refuse to sign that contract, though, knowing that uh, there is an offer elsewhere. He knows yeah. that okay, for this club been looking after me, yeah. let me just yeah. extend the contract. If the other club comes, mm -hmm. two clubs will communicate. But now, if the team says, ah, Look, we can't give this money to this boy, this boy grew up is from our academy and so forth, the player will leave for free. Yeah. And then the fans, that's when they start to hate the boy, not knowing that no, look, there's a story behind. And I, I think uh, that one I've seen, I've seen big player leaving for free, and then we, we supporters of certain clubs, we tend to say, ah, this player, <laughs> he was not honest to the club, the club and so forth. Because even the chairmen, they get embarrassed and go to the media and say, no, look, this boy, we tried to help him, now we did mm -hmm. this, and so they're not giving the full story. Yeah. And I think yeah. it, it, all, it also happens a lot here in Kenya. We saw with the Gorma here. Mm. Yeah, it does. So I, uh, uh, so the blame is, uh, I think, uh, we put the blame in the club official. Even uh, we, we, when we say that, you know, there is always a committee mm -hmm. in the club. Mm -hmm. So we tend to say, hey, this chairman, not knowing that there are people that helps the chairman, there are the people that provide information to the chairman. Those people should also take a blame mm -hmm. because those are the ones at the field with the players. And those are the ones that knows the players. They provide the chairman with the information and say, look, chairman, what? let's reward this boy. And this boy is on his final last year contract. Let's reward him. And then this boy will be going. And players won't leave for free. And I don't think players will just say, okay, look, this club is trying to help me and just leave. No. Yeah. But if the club says, no, look, what you are asking is too much, not providing the the, the the explanation just to say, hey, boy, you grew up here. We helped you. Mm -hmm. And then we are not going to give you that. The boy will wait. And the last day, he would just leave for free. Okay, I think I would have asked you this question before we went deeper. 
And then again, apart from being a football agent, I think you also have your businesses as well. Did you get my question? No, 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 no. We are you were breaking a weekend a bit other. Yes. Okay, sorry. Okay, should I blame my network or the South African network? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, yeah. South Africa is a big country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Today today we're experiencing network from I don't know why, but from my side, I was thinking uh -huh. it's from your side. Yeah. <laughs> I also think it's from your side, but it's okay. Okay. <laughs> I asked, yeah. apart from being a football No, you can agent, repeat the same question, then I can just... Okay. Know, trying to say. Apart from being a football agent, I think you also have some of the businesses that you run. Okay? You're saying? And apart from being a football agent, do you have any other work that you do? Yes, yes. Uh, the same company that I'm doing agents in it, it also does a training. I also provide training for government, parastatal, and okay. uh, private companies. Uh, those are conferencing and workshops. Mm -hmm. That's what I do, okay. uh, apart from football. Great, great. No wonder you have been busy. You are a busy man. <laughs> Now, now Frank, uh, before we just wind up uh, the interview, because I know you are also a busy man, so I don't want to take so much of your time. Maybe a word of advice to the players, because um, most of them, I think most of them do not, do not know that football is like just a short career, it's not a long term, it's a short term career. And then another, another word of advice that they should, uh, you, sh you can tell them while, what they should consider while joining a club. Yeah, mm, football uh, indeed is a very short career. Mm -hmm. It takes you from one point to another, then it stops. Yeah. But family won't stop, and then your needs won't stop. Mm -hmm. So I would say, while you can still provide, get a good contract with the club, mm -hmm. know your value. Mm -hmm. And also, apart from football, invest in uh, certain businesses that you know that uh, it won't take your money. Okay. Because football uh, footballers, they tend to invest to business that they can't even understand. Mm -hmm. You know, they put their money there, and in the end, they get their money is lost mm -hmm. through the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, guys, before, as we just joined up, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Safari Soccer Show. Please just follow us on our, all our social media handles at Safari Soccer. Follow my personal social media handles as well at Yvonne Etta. Maybe Frank, just as we wind up, I think you lost him uh, when you were winding up on your word of advice. Yes. Yeah, no, I was just saying, um, you know, uh, my advice to footballers is that don't invest in the business that you don't understand. Yeah. Because you take your last money, you put it there. After football, you don't understand what's happening and then you lost all your savings. Okay. So first, if you were to invest, understand the business first mm -hmm. and know that that business, it won't consume much time off your playing uh, side. Yeah. And also have the advice, have a person that you, you regard as an advisor to you mm -hmm. and that person that you trust. Because now footballers, I can tell you that, no, look, I invest in transport. Yeah. You put your money, you buy, trans you buy cars and what, those businesses is not working for you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you are just been told that, no, look, we've lost so much, so much, and then you don't even understand. Mm -hmm. Then after football, you don't have anything to show then that's when you start to blame clubs and say, yeah. look, these clubs, they are not giving me the platform to be maybe the junior coach and so forth. You hold a grudge to your former club. <laughs> I think the proper planning is very good. Okay, Frank, thank you for making time for 
uh, show today. And I think uh, uh, my, I hope my next week's guest will be Anthony Lafon. I'm hoping so. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think we can end the show from here. Let's, let's uh, wait for Frank, then we just close the show. Oh, and before I close the show, guys, last week uh, we didn't do a show because I have been unwell for quite some time. And then I have tried to date uh, for the interview. And I hope, I hope Paul will be well as I try to recover fully because I'm still under medication. Let's let's just give a minute to Frank if he will be back. Then it's okay. If he wants to be back, then I can just end the show from here. Okay, I think I will just end the show from here. And thank you guys. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe at Safari Soccer Show because most of my those who watch my shows are not subscribers. Please don't forget to subscribe as well. So uh, thank you and I'll see you next week. Same place, same time. <laughs>